G'day guys, I thought I'd do a quick video on plants in and around my pond. This list is by no means exhaustive, it's just plants that I'm using in and around my backyard ponds. It's the start of autumn here so some things look good and others have already passed their peak. Now there's much nicer gardens than mine but hopefully this will give you some ideas for in and around your own ponds. I should say I'm a pretty lazy gardener, so I prefer plants that can look after themselves. Now just to give you an idea of how much difference plants make, um, I want to show you before the gardens were added to these ponds. So 12 months ago this pond looked like this, and 9 months ago this pond looked like this. So as you can see, adding plants certainly makes a big difference. Now these ponds are still really young, so as the plants mature, I expect the ponds to start looking better and better. I should also say where I live, east of Melbourne, Australia, uh, is a cool climate by Australian standards. Uh, we're classed as having a temperate oceanic climate. Anyway, let's jump into the list. Uh, the first plant I want to mention is impatience. I absolutely love these little suckers for planting around a pond. You can plant them directly into the gravel on the inside of the pond. Uh, that's right, they thrive on wet feet. There are varieties that will tolerate sun as well as very deep shade. And the pops of colour are just amazing. They can be treated as an annual and reintroduced each year. I've found that some of mine survived the winter and just bounced back in spring. While we're on flowers, I like dianthus. Uh, these are nice ground cover, and when they flower, they just flower in mass. These are best suited to ponds in the sun. Another great flower is gaura. These are commonly known as butterfly bush. These flower for pretty much eight or nine months of the year. Uh, they most commonly come in a pink and white variation. This is a little fuchsia. These are old fashion plant. You don't see them very often anymore, but I love their unique flowers. They remind me of my grandma. They will do best in a sheltered area, uh, away from direct sun and severe frost. This one's called Euphorbia wolfeni. It has very unusual yellow flowers that appear in spring. I like it year round because of its interesting foliage. This little guy is Viola Labradorica. It produces loads of purple flowers, mostly in spring. It will pop up a few here and there as the season goes on. I should say it does self-seed easily, it, but it has a low growing habit, so I allow it to fill in the gaps. The foliage looks great all year round, and it can be grown in both the shade and the sun. This is Cerastium snow in summer. It's currently autumn here, so no flowers, but when it flowers, it's quite the sight. Again, this is a great flowering plant that also has great foliage. It'll flower best in sunny areas. Around this pond, I planted a hedge of Linicerina tita. It's really fast growing hedge. It will need a prune two or three times a year. I use it here because it grows nice and thick and should keep any little kids out of the pond. Here I have Dichondra silver falls. It's an awesome little ground cover. I'm using it here to soften the rock work around the waterfall filter. It seems quite happy blurring the lines between land and water. When it comes to blurring the lines between land and water, the Copia Munaria is a winner. It can be planted inside the pond or outside. It has pretty white flowers for most of the season. I use this plant a lot in and around my ponds, um, especially in my bog filters. It's evergreen and survives the frosts. Milfoil is another aquatic plant that I use extensively in almost all my ponds. There are tons of different types of milfoil. This particular one's an upright variety. Here I have it growing in the stream of the pond. It's great at removing excess nitrate from the water. I also like to use it to soften the pond edges um, where the rocks are. But more importantly, it provides great habitat for the fish. Uh, here you can see a bunch of southern pygmy perch hiding under it. Another submerged plant I like to use for fish hiding areas is eelgrass. Here I can see some small fry swimming around in the background. But well, while I'm here we may as well stay inside the pond. You can't have a pond without a water lily or five. This footage doesn't do water lilies any justice. I only have hardy water lilies as tropical ones won't survive my winter and I'm too lazy to pull them out and move them indoors. 
they do like a fair amount of nutrients. Uh, so I feed mine with a fertilizer tablet. I feed in spring and again in summer. That seems to keep them flowering pretty good. For some height in the water, I love to add this tassel rush. The foliage is nice and soft and the plant isn't anywhere near as invasive as some other rushes. This one's actually an Australian native. I've got two in this little pond. Uh, they've been in here for three years. For something with strappy leaves that doesn't get as tall, uh, I use this dwarf sweet flag. I reckon it looks really cool growing amongst the rocks. Both the tassel rush and the sweet flag are planted inside the pond. This one's called a water fringe. It looks like a water lily, but it isn't. It sends out little runners that will colonise all the shallow margins if you let it. It tends to keep its foliage throughout winter. This is why I like it, as it provides that good surface cover for the fish from predators. In summer, it produces loads of small yellow flowers. Okay, so now I'll move more on to the shrubby plants. This one here is Acacia cognata. Uh, this is either mini cog or limelight, I can't remember. Anyways, it's a nice soft Australian native and just looks at home around the pond and nestled amongst the rocks. It usually grows to about a metre by a metre, but it doesn't mind a good pruning, so you can maintain it at whatever size you want. Okay, here I've got Strobilanthus gold fuscia. You don't see this one often enough. It's a brilliant little shrub. It looks kind of like purple bamboo without the invasive habit. This awesome dude's called Nandina domesticanana. Uh, I love Nandinas and have used them a lot throughout our gardens. Foliage is constantly changing with each season and they pretty much look after themselves. Every one or two years, I give them a hard prune to maintain the bushy shape. I feel like Japanese maples and ponds just belong together. Sure, they make a mess in autumn, but it's so worth it. In this garden behind the maple, I also have a different species of Nandina. Uh, this one's called Nandina domestica and it grows to about 1.8 metres. The little moss looking plant, that one at the front, is called Scleranthus biflorus. Uh, that's an Australian native. It's so cool the way it grows over and around any obstacle. The common name is Canberra grass. <laughs> now I've sort of got carried away with the ground covers again. Uh, Ajugas always do well around the edges of ponds. This one's just a common Ajuga purpurea. Uh, there's many different species available. Anywhere where there's a lot of rock, I find adding sediments is always good. Um, this little guy here is called Jelly Bangs. I haven't used a lot of grasses around the ponds, but you can't go wrong with a good foxtail grass. This purple variety is a really good one um, because the seeds are sterile, so they won't spread everywhere. This is trackless bird and tricolour. In the tropics, it's quite a vigorous climber, but down here in our cool climate, it's more a bushy shrub. Here I'm using it just to hide the bog filter. I'm trying to wrap this up, but I just remembered elephant ears. How <laughs> could I forget elephant ears? They look fantastic, but they are sensitive to frost, so they need to be kept protected. This one here sits next to one of the wine barrel ponds on our veranda. Another one with nice, big, interesting leaves is all different variations of canna lily. They can really add that tropical vibe to around the margins of the pond. Most varieties will die off in the winter and then return in the spring. Another really cool thing to add to your ponds is carnivorous plants. Um, most of them do really well in moist, wet areas. Um, <laughs> this one's my little fly trap right next to a little waterfall. Hydrangeas are another large shrub that look really good around ponds. I especially like the oak leaf hydrangea. The foliage is just fantastic. The only downside with hydrangeas is that they are deciduous, but that does give you a chance to give it a good prune and keep it looking good. I hope this has given you some ideas. I know there's nicer gardens out there, but they just seem like a lot of work. I don't have a ton of free time, so everything needs to be low maintenance, but I do want it to look good. If you're interested in creating low maintenance ponds on a budget, you'll want to subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching. See ya.